What's up, you guys? Welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. In this section, we'll be doing inversions. Uh, this is going to be a third, a third part for inversion. And in this video, we'll be learning some manipulations with, uh, with this inversion technique. Okay, so a lot of algebraic manipulation. Uh, some is going to be exponential. And there are sometimes we will be dealing with trig functions. How do we solve this integral here? So you can already tell if we learn from ninja substitution, right? Uh, if this becomes like a negative version, uh, we can use some algebraic manipulation here. All right. But of course, because we have zero to infinity and we have one over x, you know, this is we already know this must be u equal one over x. All right. So when we do that, we know this gets neutralized because we've seen that multiple times. And our E gets a swapped version. So now it's swapped. But then we can use algebraic manipulation. Multiply uh, E to the X minus one over X to both top and bottom. And we get X minus one over X. e to the x minus 1 over x plus 1. You already know where this goes, right? It's just like ninja substitution. Right? This add this plus this. It cancels out this plus 1, right? So it's going to cancel out when we add these two integrals together. So we'll just dive in to x squared plus 1. And we already know what the answer for this is. Just by looking at it, this is equal 5 over 4. Okay? This one is actually very tricky. Alright, so there's something suspicious, 0 to infinity, and we have uh, 1 over x. Okay? So, uh, Again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just testing out. I'm just seeing where this will take me. Okay, where would this take me? If we, if I try u equals 1 over x, then I get 1 over x e to the negative, oh, well, 1 over x squared minus x squared. But because this is being squared, it doesn't make a difference. It makes no difference. Right. However, now I have dx of x squared. So now I have this x cube here. Um, how does that help? Right? You're probably thinking you'll stop here and hesitate. Okay, maybe this doesn't work because how am I going to add these two together? Well, let me show you. Let me show you. This actually does help because here's what happens. Yes, I'm going to add these two together, but you're, you're probably asking why would you add these two integrals together? Watch very closely. This is very difficult. It's very sneaky to uh, to see. Here, of course, notice that we have e to the negative the same thing, right? right? E to the negative x squared minus 1 over x squared squared. Okay. Let me factor that. I have x plus 1 over x cubed. What do you notice? What do you notice? This is u. Let u equal x squared minus 1 over x squared. Then what is du? 2x plus 2 over x cubed. And notice, if I factor 2 out, we have exactly our derivative here. Oh my goodness. This is equal to one fourth from, oh well, if we plug in zero, we get negative infinity. Plug in infinity, we get infinity. And now we have e to the power of negative u squared. What is this? Do you remember? This is the Gaussian integral. And so our answer is square root 
of pi over 4. Okay, so there are some times where adding it doesn't always have to be about canceling. It could also be where it gives us an opportunity to perform just a base, well, not really a basic u substitution, but u substitution in general, right? So this is very tricky to see, uh, quite rare actually, unless a lot of people watch this video and start making integrals like this, then um, rest in peace. But uh, this is one way of solving uh, using inversion is to uh, create a derivative for a u substitution. Okay, a very sneaky move, very sneaky. We have trig functions now. Sine of x plus sine of 1 over x. And it's from 0 to 1. Um, how is this inversion, right? So this is where we start getting... Uh, now, now we're diving into some very advanced manipulation with inversion. Okay? Watch very closely. I'm going to need you to watch very, very closely. Okay. Let u equal 1 over x, okay? Then, what's going to happen is when we let 0, plug in 0, it's, oh, well, right-hand side of 0, forget infinity, and I'm putting it on top because we know the negative is going to swap it, and 1 is just going to keep it as 1, okay? And of course, when we do the uh, substitution, it's, it's not going to make a difference, Right, just commutative property, and then of course we know that this x is going to be neutralized. Okay, so now what? Let me add it together. Add this together. We get from zero to infinity. Ah, oh, this this is the type of bound that we are used to, right? Yes, this is the type of bound that we are used to. Okay, so in general, don't forget the two. Okay, we just we added it together. We have to divide it by half. So I did this whole thing just to get the correct bound. That's why I I did that. Now you're probably asking, why do I need zero to infinity? Well, what are we gonna do? Do inversion again? No, I'm not gonna be doing inversion again because. Do you remember your intermediate training? What is this? What does this look like to you? You should know this if you remember the Dirichlet integral, right? It is the Dirichlet integral. This is pi over two. That's literally what we have here, right? We know this is equal to pi over two times a half. That's what pi over four. Right? But then what is this? What is this? From 0 to infinity, sine of 1 over x over x dx. Right? We'll let u equal 1 over x. Then we get pi over 4 plus a half, 0 to infinity. Now here, we, this becomes sine of x x squared neutralizes it back to x. This is also pi over 2, pi over 4. So in general, our answer is just pi over 2. So this integral here is pi over 2, right? I'm using the inversion technique not to cancel anything out, but to get to control to uh, manipulate the bound, right? I used inversion to turn my bound into zero to infinity. That way, now I can use the Dirichlet integral, okay? Because I need zero to infinity. I need that bound to solve this integral, pi over two, right? Here we have zero to one, so we can't use the Dirichlet integral. So I use the inversion, right? Very sneaky move, again. This is, I'm just letting you experience all these ways of using inversion manipulation. Okay? Do not freak out.
do not freak out. Just just don't freak out. Let's uh, we can do this. We can do this. We have zero to infinity, and we have a one over x x here. X plus one over x. Very suspicious. Very suspicious. Let u equal one over x. Then again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just testing it. See where this leads me to. Right. We know this is x out of x. So now we have 1 over x, ln of x, but this makes it negative, right? ln of 1 over x is negative ln of x. And of course we have, well, let me put x squared here. 1 over x squared plus 1, right? And now this simplifies. Usually, you know what? Usually, when you're speed integrating in a competition, you just kind of simplify at the bottom, right? Uh, this becomes one over x squared. This is how I would compete. And then, okay. Uh, and then I would multiply top and bottom by x squared, right? x squared multiply x squared. And I know that, you know, this is going to give me the same denominator. And this is going to give me the same numerator, but with a negative. Wait a minute. This gives me i equals to negative i. Ah. What do we do when we have i equals negative i? What do we do? This is 0. This whole integral is equal to 0. OK? Uh, you can write it all out if you want to, if you need to. Uh, if you need to get more comfortable with inversion, you can write it all out. But uh, for those who are who are advanced enough, uh, when I compete, when you compete, you don't have to rewrite the whole integral. You could just, you know, write it at the bottom and simplify it. You know, oh, okay, this is x squared x squared. Uh, this is four plus x squared uh, plus. One and the, uh, the numerator is going to, you know, be the same, etc. Okay, rather than writing the whole integral out and uh, losing time. Okay, this is our last integral, and you're probably intimidated by how this looks, but don't freak out. Breathe and go with the flow. Just take small steps, simplify it, and you know you start to see some uh, some hints here and there. So first of all, we have negative infinity to infinity. So you're probably thinking, oh sh crap, you know, we can't use inversion. But look at this. We have so many x, 1 over x, x, 1 over x, x, 1 over x. We have, there must be a way to use inversion, right? So how can we do 0 to infinity? Easy, right? Notice that this is an even function. Symmetry. Don't forget about symmetry. Do not forget about symmetry. And now, oh, well, that was, you know, that was an easy step. Now we can just go dive into inversion. So now here, let's see, if we let u equal 1 over x, right, well, this nothing changes here. Cosine's an even function. So technically, nothing changes here. It won't make a difference. And then we have x plus 1 over x. But now we have 1 over x squared dx. Do we multiply that out here? But wait, but then that's going to give us x cubed plus x. I'm going to grab a blue for a minute. Okay. 2 sine of x plus 1 over x cosine x minus 1 over x. Do you remember your trig manipulation? Advanced trig manipulation. Let's see. Uh, if we have 2 sine of a cosine of b, what is this equal to? Sine a plus b, right? Because this is this is derived from sine law, because sine, cosine, cosine, sine. 
and then this is plus sine of a minus b. Ah, and we don't have to do the half because we already have the 2 here. So that's what this is. That's what we're about to do. Yes! We are about to do that. And so now what we have what we have here is this is 0 to infinity sine of 2x because this plus this is 2x plus sine of 2 over x. Okay? And we're going to go ahead and keep the bottom like this. Okay. Very tricky move. This was a little hard to see because we're distracted by one of the x's. We're distracted by this, right? But notice we could do a trig identity here. And now, uh, I'm, let me actually clean some space. So what do we do now? So what we can do is we can actually split this up. Okay, just trust me on this. We're going to split this up. I'm actually going to write this as x, x squared plus 1. Okay, and on the next part, uh, I have sine. Well, actually, I'm going to split it. You'll see why. And the reason. You can probably already see this already, but I want to uh, use inversion. So here, only for this portion, right? I want to take away this x, uh, I'm sorry, the x from the bottom, that u go over x. So now we have 0 to infinity sine of 2x, x squared plus 1. And then plus, now this is uh, sine 2x. And then, of course, the denominator is going to neutralize it. I'm sorry, uh, x squared plus 1 is going to be neutralized. However, we have 1 over x here, which gives us this. Right? But then I need the denominator to be matching up. So multiply top and bottom by x. Oh, look at this. Factor out the sine 2x. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'll write it right here. Look at this. Sine 2x, we have 1 plus x squared. This is the sneakiest inversion trick ever. That cancels out, and now we're left with a Dirichlet integral, and do you remember what this equals? This is equal to pi over 2. So that whole integral is equal to pi over 2. Very tricky. We learned a lot of tricky inversion manipulations. So I highly recommend that you rewatch this uh, video and uh, try the integrals yourself. You know, experience many ways to use inversions. Because it's very tricky. It's very uh, advanced to get comfortable and get used to. Okay. All right. I believe that's uh, that's it for this section. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.